Hey everyone and welcome to Talk Daily with Eddie and today we're going to be talking about an article that's provided by Motor Trend again and this is actually a division, uh, the, inev the Inevitable, presented by Volvo News. I'm not sure how that works, I think they just all like under the umbrella of Motor Trend. Anyway, this is a great article by Mr. Justin Banner and um we're gonna discuss a little about about the subject um if you're uh, if you like cars and if you're just interested in what's going on in the future and just in general uh the, this uh stay tuned because this is very interesting uh this concept because um it, basically the bottom line is bmw fifth generation electric motor is gonna be brushed all right let's give this a pause brushed and if you don't know what does that mean well we're gonna explain it a little bit uh, the electric motors, uh, for example, is an electric motor shows, and this is brushless. I don't know if you can see. There's actually a magnet uh, in there. Um, so basically, um, um, gonna read a little bit here. It says we hinted an impression power outlet of the BMW iX M60 motor in our first look, but the fifth generation electric motor technology deserves its own examination. That's because both extremely high tech and a little bit old school. And they're referring to the fact that it's going to have a brushed motor. And uh, uh, for me, from my background in chemistry, I can tell you that they mean they're not going to use magnets. And uh, let's go to this. So it says if uh, they're mentioning here that uh, if you play with a, if you play radio controlled rock crawlers or have taken a party electric drill, you're familiar with the brushed motor. Yes, yeah, there you go. These have been around since invention of electric motor and called brushed because a set of brushes transmit electricity to the spinning rotor via what's called a cuminator on the rotor. The so the point is, here's a picture of it. Um, you can also Google it. I mean, it's amazing. There's a lot of videos out there explaining to you how it works. It's not. We're not going to go too much on details on how it works, but what we're trying to get to the point here is see all these magnets all the way around. That's what they're talking about, the brushless. Like here, if you have any power tools, most of them are brushless. They even advertise it. Oh, it's brushless motor, brushless motor is great. Why? Because brushes wear out. Brushes make contact. Anything that makes contact wears out. You, you should understand anything that moves, anything that has friction eventually wears out because the two contacts, the two surfaces making contact and they do wear out. Uh, here, so the, in, to the point, the rotor can include two or many more electromagnetic fields, which energize by a pair of contact and brushes, and that's the that's the point of contact. And uh, on the accumulator, uh, likewise, the motor uses a few of, as two brushes, but can be used as many brushes necessary. Long story short brushes so you're telling me okay eddie w w what are you talking about what's the point of this why, why are you mentioning because bmw I, I, I don't do, they're including brushes they're saying you know what we're gonna step away from the magnets um so brushless motors either utilize permanent magnets in their component that spin or induce a magnetic field by winding a wrapped around a ferromagnetic metal ferromagnetic metal in a spinning component ferromagnetic basically that's magnet um, it's basically a metal that holds the magnetic um, orientation. So the point is, what's what, why is BMW doing this? Uh, it's because simply rare earth metals. Rare earth metal. I'm just going to cut down to the whole point of this whole article. Rare earth metals. They don't have enough magnets. And yeah, magnets does cause friction because a magnet doesn't stop. You can't just stop a magnet from existing. So as the motor is spinning... There's still magnet and there's still, there's some resistance. That's why they're using clutches to separate them. But BMW is simply saying, okay, we're just gonna make a brushed motor, but it's gonna be concealed in a very closed, confined area that dust is not gonna get into it. Um, and how long would that magnet last? If, for example, if for here they ask them how excuse me, how long would that electric motor last? And uh, in the article I said, we asked BMW about the life expectancy of these brushed and uh, accumulator and what happened as to the dust as they were. While they couldn't give us a lifetime estimate of the brushes, they did ensure us that brush motor are in enclosed and sealed compartment, eliminating dust contamination inside the starter rotor wiring. So they put them in enclosed, confined area. But uh, I'm I'm going to let you guys know then the, the main reason they're doing this is um, because of this. And uh, are you guys ready for some science? Because there you go. Do you remember this? Remember the periodic table? Oh, yes, sir. I love chemistry. And uh, do you remember do you remember where are the rare earth element right here? These are the rare earth uh, element and uh, also lanthroid series. They're not really that rare as far as. Um, 
So don't think that, oh, they're very precious. They're like, oh, they're, they're just give them that name initially, okay? Um, but there, there's a, there's a lot of this uh, metals laying around. But unfortunately, where do you get all these metals from? And the answer is China. China, I mean, this is production. What well, is this kind of old? This is 2020. This is old. And it didn't change. It doesn't change, okay? It's not that, oh, wow, we discovered something new. China produced in 2020 140,000 metric ton of this stuff. Well, second, and by far, far, far away, second place is the United States. Less than the third of the production of China. I mean, it's very little, 38,000. Very, very, very little. And I mean, they increased from 28,000 the previous year, and probably that's 2019. Um, it's China, it just manufacturing even more. China was 132 metric ton the previous year, then went to 140. And I bet you right now it's probably even increasing, probably not by a substantial amount because it's still a market. Uh, I don't think I want to flood the market, but that's and this according to Rare Earth Investigative News. I'll put the link of everything I'm talking about in the uh, um, the description below. And uh, you know, of course, a periodic table. Um, and here, uh, Britannica, um, I'm going to get a quote from Britannica. I think it's really, Britannica is really awesome. Um, I encourage you guys to kind of read it. But uh, I'm going to read a little quote right here from them. It says, um, regarding the rare earth metal, because the rare earth metal is what used to make the magnets, okay? You can't, they're making a brushless because they don't need to use the magnets, okay? Um, so I'm going to describe a little bit what's the rare earth metals. And many people do not realize the enormous impact of the rare earth uh, elements have in their daily lives. But it's almost impossible to avoid a piece of modern technology that does not contain any. Uh, even a process, uh, basically, start so talking about flint, uh, your smartphone, automotive, um, you, everything that you use has that in it. Most technology, LCD screens, your computer has it. Doesn't electric motor in a typical automotive, as well as speakers of sound system, use neodymium iron boron permanent magnets again magnets electrical sensors imply eteria stabilized zirconia to measure and control oxygen content in the fuel i i mean technology has went up a, a catalytic converter if you're aware of catalytic converter uh, again rare earth metal what do you think people are stealing that stuff uh, relies on serenium oxide to produce nitrogen oxide and nitrogen gas and oxidize basically it helps oxidization basically helps burn the whole fuel this is things that are used for every single thing when you're thinking about a car. Okay, phosphorus and optical display contain yttrium, opium, and tribium oxide. The windshield mirrors, the lenses are polished using serenium oxide. Even the gasoline or diesel fuel that propels a vehicle was refined using rare earth crackling catalysts containing lanthanium. lanthanium. I, my pronunciation of this stuff, by the way, is when I was studying it, so I don't misspell it. I have my own pronunciation. I'm just making sure that I pronounce it all the letters. It's probably not the most proper way of saying it. It's just my way of my head. So I, when I when I write it down, I don't, you know, uh, write it incorrectly. Anyways, uh, rechargeable batteries and electrical traction motor with permanent magnets containing rare earth metal. Everything, everything, cell phones, television, computers, everything uses rare earth metal it's uh, it's it's immense okay so when you're recycling your material people that's what people are looking for when you throw away your old electronics people just strip and they use it because this rare earth metal have value just like gold okay um so i'm not gonna read it a lot about this article i just I'll, I'll put a link of this article below for you guys to read it but for you to understand how this impacting everything because everything rotates around the the, the market the cost of the market and the germans are thinking that you know what in germany we don't have that many if you look at the top 10 country production United States at 38, Myanmar at 30,000, Australia 17, Madagascar 8,000, India 3,000. Look how it trickles at the end. Vietnam 1,000, Brazil 1,000. That's it. I mean, and again, this is a large amount, okay? I'm not saying other countries don't have any, but we're talking about metric done. We're talking about like an industry that manufacture, and you can tell that China is in control. China is in control of this process. That's why you wonder why everything's made in China, because China has a lot of those resources. It's not to say that they can't ship it out for the raw material, but now we're talking about the cost of labor. And in Germany, they, until now, they're able to, their labor costs is, in effect, is working with their, with their system where they're able to continue making money and while they're manufacturing. Well, in the United States, I don't think we, our labor cost is going to be, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure we're going to be able to afford 
uh, the labor required to manufacture all sort of things, even small components that might not yield that much value, for example. I don't know, a microwave, you know, you might sell it for 300 bucks, 200 bucks. I'm not sure. Uh, what you can get at one made in China, maybe for 60. Anyway, that's a different subject altogether, but I just wanted to um, get you the point of it. If you uh, if you want to get into the um, in the details of that motor, please go ahead and read our article. Uh, again, this is a new motor they're manufacturing, and it's good to see how people are evolving and their um, uh, how companies are evolving to meet the demands of the current environment um, uh, with the lack of, uh, I don't say the lack of, but um, they're looking at, okay, what other options we have? How can we reduce the cost uh, from our end? And that's the process that's been going on since the car was being manufactured. And this is process not just uh, specific to BMW. Uh, it's definitely going across all spectrum of manufacturing at, uh, um, uh, manufacturers because they don't want to um, if they can save money they will go save money and uh, I'm not saying that uh, China is doing anything wrong or it, it's just what it is it's just they have this material good for them they have it um, so it makes sense right I mean if you want to make rum and uh, and you live in I don't know uh, Alaska why not manufacture rum when in the tropics where you have the sugar cane so it's the kind of same concept Okay. Anyways, everybody, uh, please do check this article. It's very interesting. That's the future of cars. Uh, if you're a gearhead and you like cars, that's the thing you're going to be working on in years to come. You're going to probably, oh, I'm, I'm going to change the brushed motor on my, which is great. I, I can imagine it'd be amazing, you know, the day when we get to work on these cars because uh, it's going to be much cleaner. Um, the only thing is probably don't get zapped, <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, it's it's fun to see that the, now they're looking at the longevity of this motor because that is the future now. I, I'm I I, mean, I know there's hydrogen, um, there is a uh, biodiesel, etc. But it seems that uh, uh, the inevitable is um, EV electric uh, vehicle. Uh, uh, whether good or bad, I'm not. You know, I think it's just a good and a couple of gears. I think it's a reverse and forward. Um, so anyways, uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, this just gives you something to think about uh, next time when you, when you purchase anything electronic, understand that, you know, why is it made in China? Well, now, now I know uh, because Eddie told me that periodic table right here, these are rare earth metals, uh, scantium, yttrium, lithium, and uh, lanthoid series right here. Um, and there you go. Most of it is made, uh, most of it is excavated from China. Um, so yeah, anyhow, um, uh, hopefully you guys learned something new today and uh, please let me know your comments uh, uh, down below and if you like please subscribe that's how the channel grows and thank you everybody for watching uh, stay safe out there and take care bye bye